Hello, welcome to our May Messy Church and welcome to our home. It doesn't seem very long since the last time we were here, does it? No, it doesn't. I wonder how you're getting on with your schoolwork. It must be really tricky doing it at home rather than at school with your friends and teachers. Yeah, and we hope you're all keeping safe and well and uh, we hope you enjoy Messy Church today. So our story today is about a man who was travelling from Jerusalem back to his home in Ethiopia. He was travelling along a desert road in his chariot or carriage. We've got some different ideas for our first activity about how to make a carriage or a chariot. Tony's put up a link so you can print off a chariot here. Remember to colour it in before you cut it out and, um, and stick it together because that's much easier. The only, all the instructions are on here but the biggest one I found a bit tricky was attaching the front to the base. You need to cut this into a fringe and fold it back. Don't fold this bit because that's the stand for the chariot. And then stick, put some glue along here and stick it round like that and there you have your chariot. Another idea would be to make a chariot out of Lego and I've gone a, a step further and made a whole scene. If you've got bits and pieces uh, that you can do that, some sand and some blue paper or something like that to make a pool because we need a pool in this, there's a pool in the story. Um, you can go the whole a hog hog and uh, make a whole scene. Uh, Tony's also made a, a chariot that you could have a look at that and have a go at that and Sue Chadwick has also done uh, a fabulous carriage. Um, there's a longer clip of her with step-by-step -step instructions that, you, that is separate to this video. Our story today involved a chariot, so we thought we'd look at various ways in which you might be able to make a chariot depending what you've got at home. If like me you've got a big bit of cardboard you might want to make one out of a bike or a scooter. I'm going to show you how. Now you'll need a grown-up to help you. You need two pieces of cardboard about the same size as your bike or scooter like this. Lay the bike down on the cardboard with the bottom of the wheels hanging off the bottom. Draw the outline of your chariot on the card. It was probably this sort of shape. Get a grown-up to cut out the shape using a knife or some very sharp strong scissors. Lay the piece you've cut out onto the other piece of cardboard and draw round it to make sure that they're both exactly the same. Then get your grown-up to cut that one out too. You'll see here I've forgotten where I put the knife which is not a good idea. It's always important to keep the knife in a safe place. Now lay the bike down again with the wheels just hanging off the bottom and mark the end of the handlebars. Cut out a hole so that the side of the chariot will clip over the handlebars. The sides are going to hang on the handlebars like this. Now you're going to need an off cut of cardboard to join up the two sides. This piece of cardboard will need to rest on the saddle or crossbar to support the chariot. You'll need some good strong glue and tape. Your chariot should now look like this. Now there's only one thing left to do and that's to paint it. Have fun!
Well, hello. Right, this, I've been really busy this week uh, making a carriage, my own carriage, out of some of the bits and pieces that I would have probably thrown away in the recycling bin. So this is my carriage with wheels and a front place for the driver. But inside I've made some uh, little seats out of uh, plastic boxes and I've just covered them with tissue paper. What I haven't done with mine is decorate it. So I've got some different foam shapes, colouring pens, paints, um, some glittery jewels, uh, some stickers, um, oh gosh that slipped off there, some stickers uh, and then I've oh, got wrapping paper or different coloured paper um, that you could cover and then um, if you look at one of the little ones that my um, granddaughter made she's put feathers on the top so really you might have lots of different things in your house so um, that would be great and then I'm just going to make one more different type of carriage so I'm going to move this big one out of the way okay and this one I'm going to move the pens it's just out of some duplo so there's some wheels there put the carriage on I'm sure you'll be able to make something out of your Lego or Playmobil or something you might have in the home and then I'm just going to pretend that the horse is ready to take the carriage. So those are my ideas and I'd love to see yours. Okay, bye. Um, and while I was doing this, God really showed me um, what we can make out of what we would class as rubbish. So uh, my table is now looking rather messy. I'm not sure if you can see how messy my table is looking with all the bits. But actually the story is all about telling the good news. But the good news for us is that out of our rubbish or bits and pieces, God can make something really special and precious. I hope you've had fun making your chariot. Please could you take a photo of it and put it on Facebook so we can enjoy the, your creative uh, skills. Our second activity today is making a little newspaper. We've called it Good News because in our story uh, Philip was telling the Ethiopian man the good news about Jesus. So what does that mean? What, why is Jesus such good news? Well, let's make a newspaper together and see what we can include. So, right at the beginning, I've drawn a picture of my favourite story for, about Jesus. It's Jesus calming the storm. And I've done a picture of Jesus with his disciples in the boat and Jesus is saying, peace be still. Underneath I've written, Jesus still gives peace today, even in very difficult times. You can have peace in your heart. Contact him by praying. <laughs> then on my second page, I've put the main things about Jesus that, uh, that are the essential parts of the good news about him. How Jesus died on the cross to take the punishment for our sins. How God raised Jesus from the dead so that we can have new life too. And God sent his Holy Spirit to live inside those who love and follow Jesus. Now I've done this on a separate piece of paper because I found my felt tip pens were going through so I have two pieces of paper back to back like I have. Now often in the newspapers um, there's an eyewitness or somebody who was there and, or who has a personal experience of what's happening in the news. So I thought it'd be rather nice for my third page to write a friend of Jesus writes. And here you can say what Jesus means to you, what Jesus has done for you. Explain your, it from your own personal point of view. And then because this is, on, this is good news, on the back it would be really nice to have a list of things that we're thankful for. Jesus is with us during this difficult time and so we have lots to be thankful for. And you can write a list or draw a picture if you like. Well... Yes, Jesus really is good news, isn't he?
Our story today is a true story taken from the Bible. It's in Acts chapter 8, starting at verse 26. But this is the same story that uh, Aaron preached on for our Sunday service last week. So children, if you've already seen the uh, Rachel's picture that came with the reading, then maybe you can either watch it again or you could do your own. I found that when uh, things come twice, when God shows us the same story twice or tells us the same thing twice, it means sit up and notice God's trying to speak personally to us. So I wonder if you've seen this story before, whether that's true for you too. There was a man named Philip who went from town to town telling many people the good news about Jesus. Now an angel from God told Philip to go to the desert road that went from Jerusalem to Gaza. A desert road? He wasn't going to meet many people there, was he? But Philip obeyed. Well done, Philip. Obeying God's prompting is the best thing to do, even if we don't understand why God is asking us to do something. It wasn't long before Philip met a man from Ethiopia, which is in Africa, and he was an important man who was in charge of the money that belonged to the Queen of Ethiopia. He was riding his chariot home after worshipping in Jerusalem, and as he travelled he was reading the book of Isaiah the prophet, which is in our Old Testament. The Holy Spirit gave Philip a nudge. Go to that chariot and walk beside it. Philip ran up to the chariot and he heard the Ethiopian man reading out loud. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I unless someone explains it to me? said the man. And he invited Philip into the chariot to sit beside him. This is what the man was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as the lamb before the shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Who is the prophet talking about? asked the Ethiopian man. Wow, what an opportunity to share the good news. So Philip explained that the prophet was talking about Jesus and he told him the good news about how Jesus had died to take the punishment for our sins and how God had raised him from the dead and had sent his Holy Spirit to live inside those who love and follow Jesus. Now as they travelled along the road, the Ethiopian man in the chariot believed in Jesus. And when they came to some water, he said, Look, here is some water. Why shouldn't I be baptised? And so that is what happened. In our churches today, we have different traditions and ideas about baptism, don't we? Some churches baptise babies by sprinkling water on their heads to show that they are part of God's church family. Other churches baptise people who are older and have decided to follow Jesus for themselves. They go right down into a pool of water as a symbol of being washed clean from their sins. And then they rise out of the water showing that they are starting a new life with Jesus. This is what the Ethiopian man was doing when he was baptised. He was showing that he now believed in Jesus and was going to love and follow him for the rest of his life. What a special thing to do. Have you decided to love and follow Jesus for the rest of your life? When they came out of the water, the Holy Spirit suddenly took Philip away and he continued to preach the good news about Jesus in many towns. I wonder what would happen if one day you felt God giving you a nudge that you had to tell somebody about Jesus, just like Philip did. I wonder what you would tell them. There's a verse in the Bible which says, if someone asks you about your hope as a follower of Jesus, always be ready to explain it. Do this in a gentle and respectful way. Philip did this, didn't he? And we can do the same. We don't need to know all the answers, we just need to tell people what Jesus means to us. Our last activity today is going to be making a card to give to somebody. I've got a few examples to show you in a minute. 
But we want to let people know that Jesus loves them and that we are praying for them. God might be nudging you to send your good newspaper to somebody as well. Be ready for that nudge. Let's pray about that before we start. Heavenly Father, we pray that we will hear what you are saying to us and learn to be obedient like Philip was. When we feel your Holy Spirit nudge us to share the good news about Jesus with someone, help us to be ready to do it with gentleness and respect. Amen. So, you're going to need a piece of card. Obviously fold it in half. And then you can choose your own design, but I've done one uh, like this. This one says, Jesus loves you. And inside I've put, dear, whoever you want to send it to, we are praying for you. Love from. If you want to do a heart, I found it really helpful if you fold the piece of paper in half, because then you get a nice symmetrical heart that you can stick on. I know lots of you have been doing rainbows as well, so I've made a rainbow card. God keeps his promises, I've put. He is with you. God bless love from and your name. Pause the, the video for a moment and talk with your family about who you would, could share the good news with and who you would give your card to and also to make your card. We're nearly at the end of our messy church now. We hope you've enjoyed doing the activities and hearing the story. And we hope that the person who receives your card will be really blessed by it. Toby's got a prayer for us now. And as he prays it, bear in mind that we have got some families who've got uh, mums and dads who are working on the front line. And so we include them in our thoughts and prayers at this time. And after Toby's prayer, we've got a song of blessing and it's sung by the children of the world. Maybe sit and open your hands and receive God's blessing for you and your family at this time. Goodbye for now. Guys, it's me, Toby. Right now we're in a bad time, but it isn't about us. It's for you, NHS. You're saving our lives from this horrible, horrible virus. And I made something for you. Thank you, NHS. So now we're going to have a prayer. Dear God, please make sure the NHS stays safe so they can save our lives from this corona. Please, please, please save our lives. Please, dear, amen. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, hashtag save safe and save lives.
Oh, oh, oh.